And on the men's side of the field events, what are uh, what, who are some of the athletes that are going to be participating in that, and where, where do you what are you hoping that they can gain out of the conference championship event? Um, well, we've got three guys in the field events. We've got Josh Miller, we've got the Sharon McBroom. Well, Josh is in the uh, in the throws in the indoor shot and in indoor weight throw, and we have the Sharon McBroom and Jason Zavislek are both in the long jump. And really, the expectations with them and. I would say is just get down there and, and compete. Um, some of these guys haven't competed for a year or two since coming out of high school, so I think we're still in the process of getting the rust off and just getting them back into the field of competing every week. So, um, And then only having three field event guys, sometimes it's a little tough to get a real good uh, sense of competition in practice. With the girls, it's a little different because we're sort of stacked two or three per event group, and so they get that competition in practice, and it helps them for the meets. Guys, we really haven't built the program up yet in in the same regard. If that makes sense. So, really, my expectations for them is just survive the experience, and then. Uh, try to better themselves for outdoor. The Atlantic Sun Championship, both teams are very, very excited about. Uh, our first Division One indoor track and field championship. Uh, in, in comparison, before I go into individuals, uh, last year as a team in, in our final Division II uh, conference meet, we took uh, eight men and nine women, and that was about the same that we took for our outdoor championship. Uh, this year we are taking 14 men and 18 women uh, and leaving uh, a fair amount at home. Um, the Atlantic Sun is uh, in some events much more competitive than the Division II conference we came from. In other events it's about the same. Again, coming from, uh, coming from D2 and D1 you would expect this step up to be tremendously different. Um, it, it is truly hats off to uh, how competitive the GLBC was last year, but um, our opportunities on both men's and women's side, uh, since the Atlantic Sun is not a football conference, uh, the throws present an opportunity for both of our, our men and women throwers. Uh, we are certainly very strong in the distances, especially on the men's side, uh, with uh, Brendan Schwalick and J.J. Weber really using each other to kind of catapult both of themselves up to the front of, of the packs and of every race we've been to this year, uh, regardless of uh, whether it's been a, a smaller meet or a, a large, large race like we've seen at Indiana University a couple times. Uh, both of those young men are, are ranked very high within our conference and uh, we're hoping for the best for them. Uh, Doubling up in the 3,000 and the 5,000 on Friday and Saturday are uh, J.J. Weber, Brendan Schwalick, Rick Harm, and Zach Holtkamp. Uh, again, all of them being ranked in the conference. Uh, and that is uh, not something we can say about every event we have on the track. So certainly that's our strength on the men's, men's side. Uh, our distance medley relay with uh, Josh Macon, Matt Kincaid, Eric Tomczewski and Tyler Mowry <coughs> should do should do well. We're uh, we're middle of the pack on that, and depending on on how things go on the uh, on an untried track for us, it's a it's, it's a different type of facility. Uh, we're hoping for the best on that. Um, you know, again, our our team score for the men, since we're not filling out every event. Uh, we are missing opportunities uh, on that front. Paul Lingano, Paul, the ASUN championships are coming up this weekend, so wondering what you can uh, give us a little preview of what you're expecting from the women's side in the field events. Gotcha. Well, um, right now Tyler Thomas is two inches out of first place in the high jump in the uh, in the ASUN rankings. So if she catches a good day, um, I think she could potentially be in the top three. Right now she's the highest ranked athlete that I have on the field event and, and hurdle side of things. Uh, on the long jump, Karina Falks um, is just out of the top ten, but um, again, if she has a good day, I could see her being up in the top eight. And then in the 60 meter hurdles, Kendall Richmond, uh, the top eight will score at conference. I think right now she's sitting either 8th or ninth, and has yet to really have a clean race in the hurdle. So if she has a clean, and by that I mean 
Um, she's usually banged one of the six hurdles somewhere uh, in, in her races this season. So if she can have a clean race and get out of the blocks, well, I could see her making it to finals and being in the top eight. For the women's side, we are uh, we have every event covered except the pole vault, which right now we don't uh, we don't have any vaulters. Uh, it's a very expensive sport, a very uh, time-consuming sport. Uh, we would need another coach uh, for that. So we don't we don't support the vault right now, which we are not different than a lot of universities that that don't support the vault. But in uh, for our women, uh, I'm very proud of our women, as uh, Coach Longano has coached uh, our, our short sprint group and field events. Uh, Coach Peltz has done a wonderful job with our long distance sprinters, uh, some 400s and 200s. Uh, so we're, we're looking for very good things from, from that group. Uh, taking down um, a, a couple of our, our women's distance runners and uh, in my group, the cross country track group, uh, Kayla Justice, uh, Caitlin Hooper, and um, Tori Duncan should do well. Uh, I've got them slated for a double on the 3K, 5K circuit as well. Uh, looking forward, as I mentioned before, our, our 400 group uh, seems to be doing very, very well. And, um, and Paul alluded to some of our field event folks that, uh, that have been consistently on top of the rankings as well this uh, this whole season. Uh, the great thing about indoor is that um, we have another shot at whatever happens, we have another shot at outdoor track. So uh, so some uh, this is kind of the, the pre-season, if you will, although it's a championship season, make no mistake, but uh, what happens here will really set the tone for our outdoor uh, meets, which our schedule starts on March 16th. So we're going to have a couple weeks off, uh, which will still keep active, but uh, maybe the intensity won't be as strong during those couple weeks. And then we, uh, coming out of spring break, we're uh, we're right at it with some uh, some pretty major Division One meets this year. We're looking forward to it. Do you right. think everybody's looking forward to the uh, both men and women? Everybody's kind of looking forward to the competing in the uh, their first indoor championships. In I the think they're one. looking forward to it, and I think there's some anxiety at the same time because I've put no expectations on them all year, and then. Um, you know, the last two weeks, that's all we've really talked about is conference. And I know that this is the pinnacle of the indoor season. So, yeah, I think they're looking forward to it. But at the same time, I think there's a little bit of anxiety because we're very, very young. You know, 90% of my people are freshmen. And so to sort of go into the unknown, you know, when a year ago you were a senior in high school and you were the tops on your team and maybe the tops in your region or, you know, for one girl, she was state champ, and now here you are completely at the bottom again, and it's a very sharp learning curve, and, and you know, you're, you're at the bottom.